friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. I know sometimes you doubt if you are truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own. I know that you are praying for a way to know the difference and to be confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word. If you are ready to grow in your faith and your identity in Christ and to confidently step into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, have you been feeling isolated in your walk with God? We have just come out of a long period of quarantine and isolation, and it can sometimes feel difficult to be connected to each other. And in fact, the enemy wants us to feel that way. I want you to realize that there are other believers that are feeling the same thing, longing to feel more connected to not only God, but to each other. I want to invite you over to my free Facebook community where we can connect with each other, talk through some of our struggles, encourage each other, and pray for each other. On Facebook, look for the She Hears Hearing Jesus podcast community page. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Today we're going to be looking at um, an, something that happened to me when I was a teenager. And I think it is important uh, for, the, for a couple reasons. Number one, I think it plays into this idea of the desire to be chosen. But I also think that it helps us to understand that there are things that happen even uh, early on in our lives or even possibly before salvation that inform or help to form our spiritual formation down the road. And there are things that happen in our life that can kind of draw us closer to God or push us farther away from God. And this was one of those scenarios in my own life. And so um, I'm going to go through it. I do want to say that it could possibly be triggering for some of you. And if that's the case, um, then pause, walk away, come back to it if you want to, or if you want to skip it all together, that's fine too. Uh, you won't hurt my feelings. I just kind of want to give that little bit of disclaimer. So, uh, for me, when I was a kid, I grew up in a chaotic home. And so one of the ways that I escaped that chaos was to really, uh, attend different Bible studies and youth groups. And I think at one point, except for one day of the week, every other day was filled with either a youth group or a Bible study. So I was like a groupie for Jesus. And I would just go to these Bible studies or youth groups because the people there were nice to me and they loved me and they acted like they want to be around me. And it just filled me up in a way that I was not getting filled up at home. So one of these youth groups, which was not my main youth group, it was another secondary youth group that I was going to, it was smaller. The the group had the decision or the opportunity to go do whitewater rafting. And we live in Pennsylvania and this particular whitewater rafting uh, outfit was in Virginia. And so we had about a six hour drive to get down there. And the the brochure that somebody had got a hold of had this picture of just like these smiling, laughing people and, you know, it looked like a good time. And so it was enough of a promise of a good time that uh, we decided that the six hour drive was worth it. And so our group was probably about five or six of us drove down to Virginia and uh, I had that brochure in my hand. And when we pulled in to the address uh, on the map, we, I, I really quickly realized something was different than I expected. When, when we got there, it was a really large, like, field grass parking lot. And there was, to the left, this big, fancy, professional sign and booth and set up with all these matching boats. And the staff all had matching shirts and you know, big disclaimers and life jackets and the whole thing. Exactly what I was expecting. And uh, what I wasn't expecting was that on the other side of the parking lot, there was another little brown shack with uh, a teenager manning the booth and some black boats and a couple bright orange mildewed uh, life jackets and a handwritten sign out front. And I, I, for whatever reason, uh, realized that 
there was two choices to make. And we decided to explore the second option. We brought enough money and were prepared to go with the first company, but we realized that if we went with the the second smaller company be, between us, we would save about three hundred dollars. And so, our teenage brains decided that uh, that three hundred dollars could be better spent elsewhere. And so we uh, kind of talked to to the teenager that was running the booth and. He said, basically, if we followed, it was all the same river, and if we followed the other boats down, we would be fine. The difference between the two companies, the the main difference, and it wasn't that, you know, shiny coat of paint on the other booth. The, The main difference was that the more expensive boats had a guide that would go down the river with them, whereas the less expensive boats, you were basically on your own. But in our, you know, 15, 16 year old brains, we thought, well, as long as we just follow the guided boats down the river, we'll be fine. And it's all, you know, the water's all flowing one direction. We're all going the same, same, same way. So collectively, our very young and (laughs) very unwise group just made this decision to rent the unmanned bargain boats. And I didn't yet realize that sometimes wisdom comes with the cost of forfeiting the shortcuts or the savings plans or whatever you want to call it. So we approached the water and the sound of the rapids really kind of drowned out any nervous caution I I had. And I think about that in terms of sin and likening that to our spiritual lives. Sometimes like the excitement of the moment and the selfishness it feeds can drown out that still small voice that really is beckoning us to safety. Uh, The excitement and the the noise of the excitement drowns that out. So we got on the river. It happened rather quickly. And at first it felt like it would be foolish for anyone to pay double for that guided boat. Um, And we, in fact, laughed about our cunning ability to save money and the freedom that we had not being told to do, told not having anyone tell us what to do. And, you know, 15, 16 years old, that's important. Autonomy is important. So at first we felt like we were almost racing these other guided boats down the river. And in the game of life, we were winning. We were, we were headed down the river first and we were saving 300 bucks and laughing about how dumb they were. And little did we realize that our superiority feelings would just be short-lived because the rapids seemed to transition from easy to more difficult really quickly. And I don't even really remember much. I know there's like class three, class four rapids. I just know that at certain points of the river, it was a higher class than others. And I was kind of the only one that started to realize that the guided boats were all going to the right of this certain boulder out in front of us, and we were headed towards the left. And so I mentioned this to the rest of the people in my boat, and they just, you know, dismissed me because it would be a lot of work to get over to that side of the river. And going against the current, a fast moving current is difficult. And despite this like nagging feeling that we should go to the right side of the river, the current on the left kind of just pulled us along. And me being the only one that thought we should go to the right, I was, you know, outnumbered. And there's so many parallels I can see to that now. Um, I was, I was blinded to it back then, but choosing obedience and to listen to the one who knows me best can be difficult. And many of the voices that are around us are really designed that way for us to accept the path that the quote unquote current of sin takes us down kind of when we're on automatic. And so it took about another minute or so and we could see why the other boats had fought their way to the other side of the boulder that at first had kind of seemed rather small. Um, It seemed small enough anyway that it didn't really warrant major alarm or change of course for the rest of the team. So sometimes, um, again, when we are headed down a path towards sin, those warning signs can seem small. And we still have the ability to make a different choice. But if we aren't paying attention or listening, 
uh, to the voices of the world instead of the voice of God, it just becomes easy to justify the, the smallness of those warning signs. And I, I can look at that now, but at the time I did not understand that. What I did understand that, that in that season was that um, very quickly things can change. And in, in the next few moments, what we realized was that that first boulder was the smallest one we would see for the rest of our trip down the river. And so now we were facing these boulders that were so large that they were separating the water into two distinct paths. And so I watched the boats on the other side really just navigating themselves confidently. Um, they had the wisdom of the guide helping them to navigate their path. And at that point, I ached for the security that they must have felt. Um, looking at the path ahead of me in our boat, I knew that we were headed for something much more dangerous than had we gone to the right side of the river. There uh, were no other boats on this side of the river, none. Um, and even the other unguided black boats that were similar to ours, uh, they recognized that the path that the guide chose was the better path and where they needed to be. And they had done the hard work of crossing the river way back at the beginning where that first boulder was. And, you know, despite our hesitance to fully trust God as our guide, the reality is, is that he knows the things that are out in front of us. He can see them long before we can. And so as we trust him and we allow him to help us navigate the things in our life, there's just this security in knowing that he already knows the course that we should take. So what happened next was something that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. As we approached um, this next rapid, I could see that there was this large spray of water kind of up and out of the water to the left and then another huge boulder to the right. And our boat came up upon this rapid. And very quickly, as, almost as soon as we approached it, the boat flipped up on its side. And it kind of got sucked into this vacuum of the water. And it tipped to the right. And it kind of seemed like it was in slow motion and one movement all at once. And I felt myself slip out of the boat. The boulder was... Um, I was turned around now, so the boulder was to my left, and it was covered in slime. Like, super slimy from whatever it's called. Uh, it's not mold, or whatever it is, underneath the water. But anyway, uh, algae or something. It was covered. And then on my right was the boat, but the pressure of the water and the current was holding the boat in place, and it was holding me below the surface of the water. So I literally was stuck between a rock and a hard place. And... Um, as much as I tried to climb out of that space, the, the boat pushing down on me and the slippery surface of the boulder, it was very quickly evident that I was not going to be able to pull myself out. And I, I tried twice to climb up and just slipped right back down. And I remember looking up and I was underneath the water, but I could see the sky above me. And it was probably only two feet above my head. Um, and I, I just remember thinking that I was really glad I was going to heaven because I knew that this was how I was going to die. And I didn't have one of those experiences that people say, you know, your life flashes before you or anything like that. I just had complete peace. I, I was... Um, just kind of looking up, thinking about going to heaven and, um, just realizing like, man, this was a short life, 15 years. Um, and I just was, was looking up and what happened was suddenly, um, as I was still looking up, I felt myself being pulled from the water. And the next thing I knew was back in the boat, I was coughing and I was drenched. Of course I was in shock, but I was back in the boat and a friend had somehow been able to reach in and pull me out. I don't really remember much about the rest of that day. But what I do remember is that in a moment where I was completely helpless to save myself from death, someone reached into that space to pull me out. 
you know, there is this inherent nature that we are all born with, that we have, that just kind of pulls us towards sin. Left to live our lives on our own, that's just where the current takes us. There really is no escaping it. And it kind of drags us along from place to place, but that current ultimately leads us to death. And there's no way we can pull ourselves from that place, even if we try. Friend, I want you to know that there's only one person that can. Isaiah chapter 46, 4b is one of my favorite verses. It says, I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. In those moments that we are overwhelmed with our sin and we are feeling helpless or and we know we're helpless to get ourselves out, there's only one that can reach in to pull us out. And that's Jesus. Friend, I want you to know something. It's not too late. We all have this desire we're born with, this desire to be safe, and ultimately we want to be safe from death that we're all headed towards, and that security that really only comes when we trust the guide. And I know that it is hard and scary and it seems like a lot of work. But that's kind of the whole point. We can't do it on our own. There's only one way that we can kind of walk in that assurance that we know eternally that we're safe. And that comes from a posture of surrender. You know, there's there's this piece of the story. I've told the story a couple times throughout my life. But there's this piece of the story that I always hold back that I think I'm going to share with you. When John pulled me out of the water, of course in the moment I didn't say anything. And I still haven't to this day said anything to him. But I didn't feel the relief that I had been saved. I kind of felt regret. And being a kid that grew up in a rough home, I remember thinking, like, when I was underneath the water and I was staring up at the sky, I remember just kind of thinking, like, okay, well, at least I don't have to go home. At least I don't have to continue to live this life. And so when John pulled me out of the water, I don't know that that's what I would have chosen. It's very possible that in that moment, if you had asked me, I would have chosen to stay under the water. Now, I'm not saying I was suicidal. I would never have taken my own life. But I was living in such a place of just abuse and um, chaos and constantly being taken advantage of. And um, well, I'm not get, going to get into all of it today, but I just remember thinking, now I have to go home. And, you know, looking back on it now, I recognize God's hand in that. He rescued me even when I didn't want rescued. He reached down into my mess and my chaos and my heartache and my brokenness even when I wanted to stay there. I think that says something about who he is. And the way that he pursues us because of who he is. If I think about what that means now, it it forces me to surrender. And it forces us to surrender when we think about that in terms of how much we're loved. Surrendering to the one who loves us enough 
to die for us, to earn the right to reach in and pull us out. To surrender to the one who loves us enough to do what's best for us, even when we disagree. To surrender to the one who knows what's coming down the river. See, I believe that not only did God know what was coming down the river for me then, in terms of we should have chosen the other side of the river, he knew what was coming down the river for me throughout my whole life. He knew that one day I'd be in ministry, that I'd be sharing the gospel, that I'd speak to kids, thousands of kids all over the world, teaching them the hope of the gospel. He knew that's what was down the river. And I believe that that's why he saved me that day. There's this counterfeit. This counterfeit life that seems to offer the same promise, but with life on your own terms. And the enemy offers this counterfeit to us. So much so that we can't even see what's coming next. The hand that God extends is out for you. Just like it was for me. And the choice becomes, do we, do we accept that hand that reaches out to reach in, to reach in and pull us out? I want us to think this week about the one, the only one that can reach down into our desperation and pull us out. There's no fear here. It's only rescue. I wish I could say that I went home that day and my parents were happy that I didn't die. That's not the reality. They didn't even care. They weren't even home, I don't think. Didn't even, I don't even know that I ever told them about it. It was just another day. But what I started to realize, even from that moment, was that apart from him, I could do nothing. John 15 talks about that, the vine and the vine dresser. That apart from him, we can do nothing. The only reason I'm even here is because God still wants me here. The only reason you are still here is because God still wants you here. He knows what's down the river. He knows what's coming. And he knows what he's set you aside for. And so I don't know where you're at. I don't know what struggles you have. Or if you even have any struggles. But what I do know is that there's a God who loves you so much. He has a plan and a purpose for you. And so when we have our tendency to go our own way instead of the way God would have us to go, he doesn't bail out and say, well, you didn't listen to me, so you're done. Instead, he stays close by so he can step in and rescue when he needs to. Even now, God desires to rescue you. To be that hand that reaches down and pulls you out. I want to spend a little bit of time in prayer. But this week, I want you to just meditate on that. How apart from him, we can do nothing. John chapter 15, you can read it. Actually, maybe I'll get my Bible out and I'll read it for us real quick. Um, I've been studying that John chapter 15, I am the vine and the branches passage. And it's so rich. We probably will do a whole series on it. But I'm going to read chapter 15, starting in verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit 
unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Let's pray. God, we thank you for who you are, the rescuer, the one that reaches down, even when we don't want to be rescued, and pulls us out. God, thank you. Thank you, oh Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you know what's down the river. In the sense that you want us to listen to you as our guide and to follow the plot path and the plan that you have set out for us. But that you don't leave us when we are disobedient. But instead you wait so that you can rescue when we need you. But then also that you see what's down the river in those moments where we feel like giving up. You know the plan you have to use us for your glory. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Help us to realize that apart from you, we can do nothing. Apart from you, we can do nothing. God, remind us of those words this week as we are attempting and trying to do things on our own. Remind us of who you are and how faithful you are. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be praying for you guys this week. We'll talk next week. Bye-bye. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.